Welcome to another Crushy TV tech tutorial. My name is James. I'm the executive producer for a video production company in Nashville, Tennessee called Seek First Productions. Today I'm going to show you a little piece of a music video we recently produced for the Cimarelli sisters. So have a look at it here. Like a small boat on the ocean, sending big waves in the motion. So, I'm going to show you the difference between after the effects and before. Here is the footage prior to us getting a hold of it in order to clean it up and implement a 3D object. You may notice a huge difference being these cars over here. We filmed this um, at the very end of the day in a yard and didn't have a lot of room to light things, so this ended up being the angle, and in our way was a road with a bunch of cars driving past which were very distracting from the mood that we were trying to go for in this shot. So to fix this we decided to throw a bush in front of these cars in order to obscure their view from the camera. So let's go into the scene here that I've created and you can see the final product right here. In fact there are two bushes. Now I'm gonna try to go through this very quickly. Okay let's try to go through this pretty quickly. The first thing I did was I 3D tracked the scene. So open up your tracker. If you don't see it here, you can go to Window, Tracker, and it'll open up for you. And hit the Track Camera button. Let it analyze. Now that we have our scene tracked, you'll notice all these points popping up. These are little tracking points. Basically, what After Effects has done is it has decided the depth of the scene based on where these points are in relation to the movement. So it's created a fake camera for us. What you want to do is select some points to create a camera and null object. So you select them, then you right click, say create null object and camera. After Effects will automatically create a camera for you. So after I had the scene tracked and I had my null created, I decided I needed a piece of shrubbery to go in front of this section in order to block the traffic that you can see here. So I went online and I found a PNG of a shrub I really liked and ended up getting this one right here and implementing it into my scene. What I did to get the shrub where I actually needed it is I took the position of my null object, I copied it, and then I went to my shrub and I pasted the position on top of there. That's the basics of taking a object and connecting it to your 3D track. So from there I decided, okay, this position wasn't really doing it for me. I needed it to be a lot further away from the camera, so I pushed it back in Z space and I ended up getting it into the position you see now. So if you look at this scene, our new shrub kind of stands out, mainly because of its color, but also because of its clarity. You see these leaves next to these leaves. These ones that right here are way out of focus compared to these. So I went in and I added a bunch of effects to kind of blend our shrub into the scene a little bit better. The first one I added was a Gaussian blur. That helps it blend in a little bit better with the scene. I then went in and I dropped the highlights using curves. Then I dropped the midtones using a second curve. Then, I really love this effect right here. After Effects has an effect called Change to Color. And what it does is it lets you take a color from a portion of the bush and lets it change to a color in your scene or any color that you select. So I just selected some of these leaves right here and suddenly, voila, our bush looks a lot closer to our backdrop here. From there, I uh, ended up having to paint out a portion of our shrub. If you zoom in here, you can see it's kind of uh, goofy looking down here. It doesn't really blend in well with the, the ground. So I ended up using paint. I'll do a tutorial on that much later, but what I basically did was I painted out a lot of our object to make it blend a little bit better. From there, I actually added a mask. You can see I drew it here using the pen tool. I'll do a tutorial on masking later. This is just more advanced, but if you look at it before and after my mask, you can see what it did. It kind of added texture to the bottom of this bush here. Boom. So it blends in a little bit better. The idea is to keep your viewer from being able to notice it. It doesn't have to look perfect, but you're just trying to keep them from noticing it. So I decided that, okay, my bush is it sort of actually still stands out. The colors are right. It's blurred enough to match with the background, but it just doesn't look like it grows here or belongs here. And it's still kind of catching my eye. It looks too, too groomed for this landscape. So what I ended up doing is adding a second bush and I went back and I did the exact same things. I tracked it to the same null object. I added a Gaussian blur. I dropped the highlights. I dropped the midtones. And then I used the change to color. And voila. 
now I have another little bush that sort of breaks up that scene and it really really keeps your eyes from noticing too much over here and so that's basically it you'll notice you can still sort of see cars every so often through the PNG transparency back there but for the most part your eyes are stuck on Lauren here in the middle of your frame singing to you so that's basically it guys this is how you implement objects uh, into your scene using After Effects 3D Tracker it's all about making sure your objects blend in nicely I'm gonna show you a few other examples that we've done um, this was a promo for the 54 Film Fest that we run in Tennessee but it basically shows some map painting um, and object integration using After Effects 3D Tracker. Hyrule Castle back here, all these pots, these trees. So that's it guys. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. If you have any suggestions for future videos, don't hesitate to tell us so. If you'd like to see future videos, make sure you subscribe, and thanks for watching.